Hey guys, so on this episode of Make It With Calvin, I'm gonna talk about why I sent an oil sample off to Blackstone Labs and why having oil analysis run isn't a bad idea, especially if you have a car that you use a lot, it's higher in miles, or you just wanna make sure that everything is running good outside of the usual, my check engine light popped on. So let's dive into it. So the impetus behind me sending out an oil sample was pretty simple. I've had my 1996 Honda Civic DX for quite a few years. I purchased it with 18,000 miles on it and it's got over 200,000 miles on the odometer, runs like a champ. It's an awesome car. You might have seen it in various uh, Make It With Calvin slash Live In The Adventure episodes. It's a good vehicle, but it is getting up there in age, and I wanted to make sure that the 5,000 mile oil changes that I was doing weren't going to adversely affect the engine in the long run. Now, mind you, I am running Valvoline um, Max Life 5W30 oil. This is a synthetic blend that's designed for higher mileage engines, so obviously this isn't just the bare bones, dirt cheap conventional oil, and I'm also spending the money for a pure later boss filter which is rated up to 15,000 miles before you need to change it out. Now the reason why I'm mentioning this is because some people seem to think that they can go 30, 40, 50,000 miles without an oil change. Just don't. And in my case I wanted to make sure that I was getting the reasonable lifespan out of the oil and the filter without adversely jeopardizing the engine. Last thing I want to do is try and save 30 bucks here and there and then end up borking the engine like 100,000 miles early because I should have changed things out. But I'm happy to report that after sending a sample off to Blackstone and paying $45 for a complete test plus TBN, we'll get to that in a minute, I'm happy to report it came back with a really good bill of health. So the actual testing procedure is quite simple. You go onto Blackstone's website and say, hi, can you send me a sample kit? So the sample kit is pretty much just this container, comes with a plastic bag, the absorbent stuff that you wrap around the sample container, which is this. You put your three ounces of oil in here. I did this during an oil change and you just write down a code number, code name, whatever on the top. There's a slip that you can either fill out online or that comes with it that you put down the vehicle, your name, contact information, credit card info. If you're paying by check, you include a check, or if you've paid for a slip online, you include the number for that. Instructions on how to take the sample, what to do, all that good stuff. They're very detailed about it. Then you pretty much stick this in the prepaid envelope, yeet it off to them, and wait for your sampling to come back. Now, the nice thing is on the oil report, you don't necessarily have to be a mechanic to understand any of this. The nice thing is in their comments section, they pretty much tell you, you know, anything that, hey, this is high, but that's normal because of this, or hey, this is, you know, whatever. I One thing I will also say is in the comments section, be very descriptive. They mention it's good to run the engine about 15 minutes before you take the sample. If you can't do that, make a comment of that. So they will be aware that if the oil or water levels are a little higher than normal, it potentially be, could be because of that and not to worry about it. If you're running any additives in the oil, say you're running like engine restore or something that's gonna have high levels of copper and lead and things like that to help try and deal with scouring, They'll know to not freak out if they see really high levels of that in here, thinking it's bearing material. So definitely, if in doubt, be a little more descriptive than you think you need to be in the comment section, especially if you're running additives in the oil or you're just not sure it can't hurt. So I won't bore you with all the details of this. I will have a link to makeitwithcalvin.com where I will have a photo and a little write-up of this. But in short, I have to say that I'm very happy with the numbers that I got back from this. The nice thing is they did make comments that um, they had very good things to say about my Civic. It didn't put much oil, metal in the oil at all. For comparison, the universal averages, which are on the right-hand side, um, show where with a similar oil change interval of 4,700 miles, looks like the engine isn't struggling at the 200,000 mile mark. Fuel dilution is okay at only a trace, that's normal. 
And there aren't any other contaminants in this oil. The TBN, which is the total base number, that's pretty much how much active goodness is still left in the oil, was good. So they recommended you could try up to a 7,000 mile oil change if you wanted. In my case, I think I'm just gonna stay at 5,000 miles. I did take this sample after I made an unplanned trip down to see my family for personal reasons and also went out to the Railroad Museum in Carson City, which is a combination of a lot of freeway driving and some pretty steep hills through Highway 88 in the El Dorado National Forest. It was also pretty hot out there. So I figured this was giving the best all around test for me, because the last thing I wanted to do was have a bunch of freeway driving, have the numbers come back is great, push my oil up, uh, change interval more, and in actual use, uh, it might not be so good. So just something to keep in mind there. That being said, the other thing that is cool is every single time you send a sample in, they will put it down next to the last one and also update the unit allocation averages so you can see over time if you have an upward trend, a downward trend, things like that. Now, one other application or something like this might come in handy, and it's also mentioned in more detail on Blackstone's website, so I'm not the one to take credit for the idea, is I'm gonna say if you're selling a car and you wanna to prove to people, hey, you know, this car is doing really good, especially if somebody's like, well, the car has 250,000 miles on it, what, what condition is the engine in? If you can honestly show them an oil test report like this and go, hey, you know, I've been doing regular oil changes on the car, these are what the numbers look like, these are considered very good. It's not a bad idea. The same thing applies to if you're going to be purchasing a vehicle and you know you want to make sure, especially if it's a higher mileage car or one that you're not really sure what the maintenance history on it is, it might not be a bad idea to talk to the seller and be like, hey, are you cool if I take an oil sample, send it off to a lab, get the results back, and if it's good, we have a deal. If it's bad, you know, I'll walk. Not a bad idea as well. Blackstone has a whole article on that. So that's my take on the oil analysis. They also will check transmission fluids as well, as well as other fluids for vehicles. I'm not gonna go into details on that. I might do a transmission oil analysis at some point on the car just for giggles and grins, just to see. But personally, it was money well spent. And it's really nice to know that my engine, knock on wood, as long as I keep doing the oil changes, don't thrash the thing, still has a lot of life left in it. That's really encouraging to see. So hope you guys found this really educational. If you've used Blackstone or other oil testing labs, either as part of your job, personal stuff, things like that, I'd love to know it down in the comments below. Um, you definitely don't have to be a mechanic or a scientist to understand this, which I really appreciate. All right. I'll see you guys here next time on Make It With Calvin.